Thank you so much, Bill. Thank you, Jerry. Good morning, everybody. How are you doing today? Welcome to Unity of Orange County. I hope you're doing well. Um, we are a little side heavy right now. I'm not going to lie. It's fine. I'm just pointing out. You guys really don't like this side of the room, apparently. It's fine. Uh, no, you don't have to move. I'm just saying. Just saying. We we flipped. We flipped. And it's really funny to me because last week Arlene sat over there. So she mirrored. Aaron and, and all them sat over there. They flipped. They're normally over here. So it's just funny to watch people like kind of mirror like self-consciously or whatever. Anyway. Welcome in, everybody. It's so great to see you here. We're going to get things going by some singing. We're going to sing, I release and I let go. Please rise. Helps you uh, get your body in alignment for better singing. There was a time in my life I thought I'd have to do it all for myself. Didn't know the grace of God was sufficient. Didn't know the love of God was at hand, but now I can say, if you are discouraged, struggling just to make it through another day, you've got to let it go, let it all go, and this is what you have to say, I release and I let go, I let the Spirit run my life. And my heart is open wide Yes, I'm only here for God No more struggle, no more strife With my faith I see the light I am free in the Spirit Yes, I'm only here for God I release and I let go I let the Spirit run my life and my heart is open wide yes i'm only here for god no more struggle no more strife with my faith i see the light i am free in the spirit yes i'm only here for god i am free in the spirit yes i'm only here for god very nice, everyone. You may be seated, and I'd like to welcome Tina to the platform. Thank you so much. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Come on, I'll. Good morning, everybody. There you go. <laughs> welcome to Unity of Orange County. It's so nice to have you here today. And so we always like to start our service by affirming our church prayer, our vision, and mission statements. So together, let's pray and really say it like you mean it. We pray, believe, and affirm continued growth and prosperity for unity of Orange County with an abundance to spare and share. With grateful hearts, we give thanks for answered prayer. And so it is. Amen. And our vision statement, centered in divine love, we joyfully co-create a world that works for all. And our mission statement, to awaken, inspire, and transform lives. And we always like to take this opportunity to thank those that helped make this service possible. Of course, our fabulous music team. We have Bill on keyboard, Jerry on drums, and Tom, who does vocals and audio. Boy, we, he's got a big job ahead of him. We've got Mark on camera, and John is uh, streaming. <clears throat> also today, we had um, our greeters. Let's see, we have um, Annette and Cindy as our greeters today. Thank you so much for giving us your warm welcome this morning. 
Shanice, our lovely Shanice, is going to do the daily word and guide us through our meditation today. Thank you, Shanice. And um, sitting in for Reverend Arlene this Sunday is Reverend Annie. And she will be having um, also a vision workshop today right after uh, service. So what is your vision for your life? So join us in this powerful workshop, which will be an experience you will not want to miss. OK, and I'd also like to thank um, our Sunday angels. Mark was so kind and brought in hospitality today. And it's lovely set up. Thank you, Mark. Um, we had Wilma with a coffee this morning. And um, we had all, um, we had a lot of other people helping set up. Thank you so much, and thank you, board members, because they are the key people that come in on Sunday mornings and get things um, all ready for the day. So thank you, board members. Um, a few of our announcements: a new book discussion group is starting on Wednesday, September the 29th, and will be from 6:30 to 8. And the facilitators are Diane and Howard. So if you have any questions, please see Howard. The book will be by Wayne Dyer, entitled Wishes Fulfilled. And it's about mastering the art of manifest manifesting. Are you looking for a way to serve unity of Orange County? Well, we are looking for some Sunday angels. And Sunday angels are people who are willing to help set up for the service or take things down after the service. And so please see um, Howard or myself, um, any of the board members, and they can um, guide you in the right direction. OK, we had a really great idea from one of our um, congregants, Annette, who suggested that we have our own name tags. Some of us, um, well, the board members, of course, wear their name tags. But um, we are going on October the 23rd, we're going to have a DYI name tag making session. And this will be a fundraiser and a suggested donation of $5, where you can create your own name badge. And you can wear it every Sunday instead of um, your handwritten ones that we have every Sunday. And um, this will also help kind of cut down our costs on our name badges that we're making, too. OK. Coming in October, Unity of Orange County Fall Picnic Party is Sunday, October the 16th, at Laguna Niguel Regional Park at Site 10. And we'll have games, pumpkin decorating, potluck, and lots of fellowship and fun. So please bring your own pumpkin so you can start now if you see one that absolutely has your name on it. And um, we will have sign-ups for potluck. And uh, we will be me meeting immediately after the service. So if anybody needs a ride, um, you know we'll be carpooling. And also, that saves a little on entrance into the park, which I believe is $5. So um, we'll more on that as we get closer. But it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, the, the Silent Voice, which is Christopher's book on homelessness, is now on sale at the following link, uh, lulu.com. And um, it's really a beautiful book. So please. Take a look at it. And with the holiday season coming around, it's always a nice little gift to give as well. If you need prayer, you can email our prayer line at uocpray at gmail.com. And our prayer team will add you to their list. I would like to also thank Jean. I don't know, is Jean here? Um, Jean takes care of the prayers that are in our prayer box. And she sends them off to Unity of uh, the Unity Village, where they will pray over our prayers for 30 days at 24 hours, 
there's somebody praying over our prayers. So um, if you have any prayer that you would like to add to our prayer box, please be sure to do so. And she's been doing this for many, many years, and we just appreciate her very much. Okay, so for a full listing of all of our upcoming activities, please go to our website, unityoforangecounty.org, and go to our calendar. Okay, thank you. Tom? So this week we're talking about being bold. Um, this song traces its way back to me discovering my love for singing. Uh, this is from the musical Kismet, which is not one that a lot of people have heard. It's not done very often. But this is the first thing that like really impressed itself on my young self and said, wow, I really love this. I want to sing. Uh, this was 1953, Howard Keel. Uh, and this song has really become kind of a, a life anthem for me. It's about being bold. So I hope you enjoy. A fool sat beneath an olive tree And a wondrous thought had he So he rose and he told it to the sky And where was I behind the tree I overheard his reverie why be content with an olive when you could have the tree? Why be content to be nothing when there's nothing you couldn't be? Why be contented with one olive tree when you could have the whole olive grove? Why be content with a grove when you could have the world? The fool stood beneath the olive tree. What a wondrous thought, said he. But alas, it is very, very deep. And so he yawned and went to sleep. Because you see, he was a fool. Why be content to be with an olive when you could have the tree? That which is lulled you to sleep, fool, has awakened me. Why should I sigh that my lot is my lot, that I can't make it anything more, when this is a lie, an excuse for a fool to snore? I walked from behind the olive tree with a wondrous change in me, for I walked with my eye upon a star. If you have heard and do not heed, there is a word for what you are. And oh, my friends, the word is Thank you guys so much. All right, it is time to get ready for the daily word and meditation. We're going to do that by getting comfortable in your chairs, feet flat on the floor if that's okay for your body. And we're going to sing together affirmatively, blessing to the world. The words are on the screen. The first one is for you. Here we go. You are the heart. You are the hands. You are the voice of spirit on earth. And who you Sing to the world. Now, having heard that, take it inside for yourself. The I am. I am the heart. I am the hands. I am the voice of spirit on earth. And who I am and all I do is a blessing to the world. Now, having heard that, expand to include everyone. We are. 
to invite Shanice to the platform. Good morning. Good morning, everyone out there in YouTube land. The word of the day for this Sunday, September 18th, 2022, is thoughtful. My kind thoughts and deeds are a blessing. My kind thoughts and deeds are a blessing. Today, I bring the love and peace of God to all of my encounters by being thoughtful. More than politeness and deeper than kindness, thoughtfulness means I consider the comfort and happiness of others equal to my own. My intention is to let those in my life know what they mean to me. I may reach out to someone who needs an encouraging word, letting them know that they have what it takes to succeed. I may surprise someone with a kind act, anticipating a need and taking care of something for them before they even have to ask. Each thoughtful word and acts lets those in my life know how important they are to me and how worthy they are of my time and attention. And from Hebrews 13 verse 16, do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. And so now at this time, I'm so excited to invite this song back as the trustee of the day, Karen, will bring up the prayer box. We're going to sing our thoughts or prayers. I invite you to sing along. Our thoughts are prayers. And we are always singing our thoughts, our prayers. Listen to what you're saying. Seek a higher consciousness, a state of peacefulness. And know that God is always there. And every thought becomes a prayer. So we just take time in the spirit of unity and gratitude and in love and in praise for the one spirit, the beloved one, that already is in the revelation and in the answer of all of these petitions and requests. And we just come together as a congregation, as a spiritual family, and we just hold each person who has placed a prayer in this box and each need, and we see through it, through the eyes of God, to the light of all lights which holds the highest, most loving will for each one here and those we may hold in our hearts. So together, just a moment of silence. And we give thanks for answered prayer and all those here. So it is. And so now as we get ready to just prepare ourselves to hear this most blessed message from Reverend Annie today, we just want to kind of dim the lights of the outer world so that that inner light of the eternal can shine up in our own souls. So we just close our eyes as a signal to the world. You will be there, but we're here. And I just invite you to ground yourself on this very present moment by just becoming aware of your feet, striking the earth as a kiss to earth mother and just as a reminder that we are here and we are firmly supported on the solid ground of spirit within all, for all, and within us. And for our contemplation, I would like to read a poem from a Sufi mystic named Rabia. Her beautiful words will guide us into our silent contemplation. In my soul there is a temple, a shrine, a mosque, a church, where I kneel. Prayer should bring us to an altar where no walls or names exist. 
is there not a region of love where the sovereignty is illumined nothing? Where ecstasy gets poured into itself and becomes lost? Where the wing is fully alive but has no mind or body? In my soul, there is a temple, a shrine, a mosque, a church that dissolve, that dissolve in God. So now with this invitation to dissolve all walls, all barriers, anything that would separate us from the love of each other, from the love of the beloved one that is in all, is all, just invite you to dwell with me in just the silent heart of God, breathing in with your whole being and out this gift of life. in and out with your whole being, this gift of love, breathing in and out with your whole being, this gift of light that shines on and on and on. And in this most holiest of holies together here, we get to sit in friendship in unity, in silence, to listen to the sound beyond the sound, to the light that shines within any darkness, and to take up this divine residence, this divine appointment with the beloved that's leaning in and already here. We just open the door of our heart, say, welcome. Let us be that sacred shine that sacred space for the one presence to dwell within us, share this time with us, trusting that all will be revealed as we prepare to enter the sacred silence and align with the one. Let us rest. Thank you. Thank you, Spirit. Thank you, beloved one. Holy Spirit, be alive and active within us. May we see with eyes of the highest love. Open our ears, our spirits, and our being to your glory and to the blessings of this day. May us be filled with love to do thy will, to celebrate this day and be a blessing. And we come back to the space and gratitude together. And we say thank you, and so it is.
Wow, that was amazing. I don't, I don't, that doesn't sound familiar to me. What was it? Oh, no. <laughs> okay, great job. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Really bold and peppy and bright. And, and, and thank you, Tom, for that song that you sang. It really speaks to the boldness that I had intended to talk about, but uh, it kind of switched a little bit. Um, I'm going to talk about boldness, dare to be bold, but not in the, the physical way I thought it would come off. And, and I changed it just because of some situations that happened with me over the past week. And I want to look at boldness as a spiritual practice or as a sacred practice. And so, um, so I titled it Dare to be Bold, and it took on its own life. So this is what happened with me. Um, I'm with this group. Well, I joined with this group, and we were doing a Peace Week program. So we have a program that was put together, and the organizer put together a program with different uh, solos on it. One of the solos was um, Lift Every Voice and Sing, and there was this woman that was singing. It was beautiful. Uh, so she was putting together the program with all these songs, and then on the program she had the Peace Song, and so she had asked me, she said, Annie, um, you know about the peace song. You can sing the, you, you know about the peace song. What I heard her say and what she said were two different things. So I heard her say, you can lead the peace song. So I said, okay, I can lead the peace song. So I go to my favorite piano teacher and I say, uh, I'm leading the peace song. Give me a key. What, what key? And so he said, are you singing the song? I said, no, I'm not singing the song. I'm leading the song. Give me the key. So he gives me the key of A. And the day of the program, I'm looking at the program, and there are these people on there. This one woman was singing Imagine by John Lennon. Beautiful, beautiful voice. Another one. So the program was set up. You sing a song, and then someone does a reading. You sing a song, and someone does a reading. And they're all solo. So... On this program, it says, Peace Song, Annie McCary. <laughs> so, uh, I, so I went through this whole thing. I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Kubler-Ross's work on death and dying, and she says that people go through these four stages of death. I went through the four stages. <laughs> I, I, I first went to fear, uh, and, fear and I, I just... I lost all sense of direction, all sense, I just lost it all. So I went over to the program organizer and I said, you have me as a soloist? And she said, yes. I said, no, and she said, yes. So, <laughs> so uh, clearly I wasn't getting through to her, so she said, you know, she's the organizer, go to the organizer. So I went to the organizer and I said, you have me on this program as a solo. And she says, yeah. And nobody's getting it that I can't sing. <laughs> so, uh, so I started bargaining. So I said, okay, this is what I can do. Uh, I made copies of it, so rather than, s I could read it, because I can do it very well, I can read it very confidently, and I said, no, we really want a song. So I thought, so, so my prayers aren't, aren't getting past the wall that I've got built up right now. <laughs> so, so now I'm in, in anger, and I don't know what to do. So I'm sitting there thinking, everything always works out for me. It always works out. How is this going to work out? And so I was talking with her. She said, well, um, you know what? I love that song. She said, I could probably sing along with you. And I thought, oh, that would be really, really great. And then another person, the person that was going to be singing Lift Every Voice and Sing, she said, you know what? I want to join in and sing. And then, uh, so there were three people joining in and singing this song. And all of a sudden, I started to really calm down. And I came to the, to the acceptance stage. The acceptance is, you know, I have to sing this song. So uh, I had printed out, and I even had, um, I had this friend of mine, I said, tape me, tape the song, because I want to watch myself in the end, because I knew what I was going to do. I was going to watch it, and I was going to criticize me, and I was going to do the whole thing, but that's how I do things sometimes. So <laughs> we get there, and when it was our turn to sing, they got on the stage, and I, the piano teacher gave me the key, and I stood there, 
I closed my eyes just for one moment, and when I heard that note that I would start to begin that song, something within me rose up so boldly. I closed my eyes, and I heard nobody else saying a word. I heard my voice. And I just went, uh, because before this, I had called on my inner Aretha Franklin. I called on my (laughs) inner Beyonce, all those inner people. I was trying to get any of them to help me with this song. Uh, They weren't coming. So, but when I got there and I started singing that song, my whole being transformed and, and I tell you, it was so exciting, and I, I just had to make some notes to tell you what I learned from that experience. And one of the things that I learned from that experience, um, w- there, there is a light within me that wanted to shine. It wasn't the Aretha Franklin light or the Beyonce light. It was my light. And that light wanted to shine so brightly and so boldly. And I was doing everything in my power to keep it under a bushel, to hide that light, to keep that light from shining. So there's this light that's in all of us that's waiting to shine. And how often do we deny the brightness of that light because of our fears, because of our anxieties, because of what the world thinks about us, because of what we think about ourselves or what we don't think about ourselves. That light is just sitting there waiting to be shiny and it wants to shine brightly. I didn't need Aretha Franklin. She's not there anyway. I made it up. I made up that inner Aretha Franklin. I made up that inner Beyonce. They were all covering my light. And when I stepped boldly out there to sing that song, that was a kind of sacred boldness that, that I have only experienced a couple of other times in my, my life, but I've forgotten about those other times. But that boldness, all I needed to do was remember who I am and that I have my own light, and my light is ready to shine anytime. And there's a light within all of us. Uh, Shanice sort of mentioned it a little bit in her reading today. There is a light within us that's waiting to be shined to shine brightly, to shine boldly, and it's up to us to recognize it. One of the things that I've learned about me is whenever I come up against something that might be a fearful experience or something that's unnerving for me or anxious producing, I'm starting to get that there's that little flicker of light within me at the depths of my soul there's that little flicker of light waiting to shine. Just If we just give it a little bit of, at a time, back away from our thoughts about what we think other people think about us. Back away from our criticisms of ourselves. Back away from the negativity. Just back away from it. You don't have to go all the way back all at once. Back away a little bit at a time. And say to yourself, wow, what? This light is flickering. Where, where does it want to shine? What is in me that's at the very depths of my soul that is triggering this flicker of light for it to shine? And just listen to it. Um, Marianne Williamson wrote in her uh, Return to Love. Uh, this is very familiar to you. Uh, if I could find it here. And, and you're probably familiar with this. What she wrote, um, she says, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measures. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous. Actually, who are you not to be? 
You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so, so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all, we are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It is not just in some of us. It is in every one of us. And as we let our own light shine, we give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fears, our presence automatically liberates others. This, I, I tell you, when I read this and I think about my experience um, and how um, as accomplished I am in some areas and how not so accomplished in other areas and how that fear came about me, I don't actually know what the fear is, but I believe what I'm reading here that um, we are powerful beyond measure. And that can tend to be a little fear producing. Uh, that's not something that I was taught that I am powerful beyond measure. It's something that I've grown into that I am powerful beyond measure. And I can stand up and say, I am powerful beyond measure. And, and yet and still, when I was presented with a song to sing by myself, I didn't real I didn't remember how powerful I was. But what I did get was that light within me. It is my light, not my darkness, that, that most frightens me. I ask myself, who am I to be brilliant? That's not something that I've been taught all of my life, that I'm brilliant. There's an inner knowing within me that knows it. There's an inner knowingness within me that knows that I am a child of God, that I am a child of the Most High. There is that within me and that knows it. There's also my responsibility to tap into that and to say to myself, I am brilliant. And I can find those areas in my life where I am brilliant. I am gorgeous in many ways. I walk past myself in the mirror now and I say, hi, gorgeous. <laughs> hi, gorgeous. Hi. If I don't acknowledge it, that light within me, uh, nobody else is going to acknowledge it. And I tell you something else. After that situation, after I sang that song so boldly, I didn't even I didn't watch the video to criticize myself. I did not watch it. I just did not watch it. But for a couple of days, everywhere I go, people were saying to me, "Did you do something? Did you had work done or something? Or uh, you 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 look." And you, they were saying, you, you, you look happy, or you, you look, so I'm, I'm, well, what did I look like before? <laughs> you, know, you have to comment like that? What did I look like before? But what I realized, that I was still glowing. That light was still shining. I couldn't see it, but people around me saw it. It's in every one of us. We are children of God. And if you look at little children, they're not afraid to let their light shine. And their light shines brightly and it shines boldly. And so what I believe what she's saying here is that we are that childlike nature that is within us. Is, is what we're looking for here, is what I'm reaching for, that childlike nature that's bold, that's running around freely, that sing any song you want to sing and not worry about what people think. Wear anything I want to wear and not be concerned about what, what people think. And so we, this boldness within us, we can actually call it a light and let that light shine. There's a scripture that talks about don't hide your lamp under a bushel. And how often do we do that? Um, and this is not to, to judge ourselves harshly or criticize ourselves harshly, but how often do we do that? Um, one of the things that I do very well is I, I, when I wear clothing, I wear clothing that I think make me look good. And so 
when I, when I wear clothing, I, I wear stuff that make me look good. And so people say, oh, that looks good on you. I say, thank you. And that kind of gives my light a little bit brighter and then smiling. And so all of this, this inner work, this inner child work, it's not going to be an inner child, but this inner child-like nature that's within us, that smiles and, and just bubbles. And, and when we do that, uh, it doesn't matter what people think about how I sounded on that. That th I haven't even watched. They filmed it. Can you believe they filmed me? And, and I didn't want any parts of it. But I got what I needed. I got the lesson that who am I to be powerful? I am me. I am a child of spirit. I am a child of the most high. And me selling myself short does not benefit anybody. But what does benefit you and everybody else around me is when my light is shining. And Marianne Williamson says, and we, when we, and as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. Think about it. When we smile, if you watch someone smile, if they're genuinely smiling, other people will smile along with them. That's giving other people permission to do the same. What we don't want to do is counteract that. Someone's smiling and, and then we have like the lemon face where we just sucked off some lemon. <laughs> but it's, it's a choice. It's a choice to let that light shine. And how freeing it is to know that as I let my life shine, as I liberate myself, I give other people permission to do the same. And she says our presence automatically liberates others. I tell you, when I, when I got done with that song this past week, people were saying to me, I didn't even know you could sing. <laughs> like me neither <laughs> I didn't either but clearly and I didn't need Aretha I didn't need Beyonce I just needed me so another thing uh, that I wanted that I got from this is um, when I was reaching for Aretha Franklin and and Beyonce and they are beautiful voices I what I was doing was dampening my own light I wasn't giving my Annie the opportunity to shine, like I was giving Aretha the opportunity to shine. She's had her light, her life in the limelight. Beyonce's had her life in the limelight. But that inner light within me hasn't. And I have been willing to give it up, to give it to somebody else. I'm not doing that no more. So don't do it anymore. And when we do that, it's different. It is really different. And I'll tell you another, another story, and then we'll go into a meditation. When I was in um, school of ministry many, many years ago, one of the things that the uh, graduating class had to do was put together a Sunday service. And so there, it was a small group of us put together, my group put together a Sunday service. And, um, and all through ministerial school, I had no intention of doing pulpit ministry. I had no intention of doing children's church. I had no intention to doing a prayer ministry. I had no intention to do chaplaincy. All the things that I've done now, I had no intention of doing them. And so when that we were putting together the program, there was someone that was going to do a solo and someone was going to do something. They put together the whole program. And when it came to do the message, um, I thought I should be a part of doing the message. But they didn't. So, so <laughs> they didn't. And so I, I was kind of ticked off. <laughs> what are you do? So, so they said, well, Annie, um, why don't you do the prayer? And I said, the prayer? That's the end of the program. That's the prayer. And you want me to do the prayer. Fine. Okay. I will do the prayer. And you can guess what happened. Probably guess if you've heard me pray. <laughs> <laughs> Something within me rose up so boldly and so powerfully. It 
didn't even sound like it, it was my voice. It sounded like the principles that I believed in. It sounded like all the stuff that I had been trained in ministerial school, but it wasn't, it didn't seem like it was me. That something within me rose up so boldly and so brightly that when I was done with the prayer, it, I, I looked up and the room, it seemed like there, the, we were in a coliseum because all I saw were, was a room packed with people completely mesmerized by the power of the words that I spoke and by the power of that prayer. And people were so amazed. This is, this is really seriously the truth. One, they, they were lining up, wanting me to pray for them. They, this one said, my knee, can you pray for my knee? Can you just lay your hands on my knee? Can you do? And so, so I did, and I connected with that power that is within me. I didn't go outside of any place. It was all within. And that power, that boldness that I allowed myself to step into. And when I did that, the light took over. The light shined so brightly that people were actually healed in that room. The light shined so brightly that truth was being revealed in ways that people didn't even know were possible. So when the light shines, when you get the flicker, stop yourself and feel the flicker and see where it's going to take you. It might take you places that uh, you can just go so boldly and so proudly too that it just amazes you. And seriously, what I know and I keep learning over and over again, it is sacred work. It's sacred prayer work and it's good work. And it's the type of work that brings so many more dividends. You get the big yield on your dividend in the financial terms. So, uh, so being bold is, has taken on a new meaning for me now. I want that boldness as a sacred practice, that boldness as a spiritual practice where I can be bold enough to acknowledge that I might be feeling fearful right now and feel the fear and allow the light, the inner light within you, the inner light that shines at the very depths of our soul. Allow it to shine on that fear. And you may find out that the fear may not be what you were fearing anyway. I had no idea what I was fearful of, but I knew I was feeling fear. And then the light just shined and it just dissipated all that darkness. And it's not just in some of us. It's in all of us. So um, I'd like to conclude with a meditation. So if you would um, just get comfortable, and we're going to do just, you know, a meditation. Um, and it's a meditation on our deepest fear. So what I'd like for you to do is, um, as you close your eyes, uh, think about someone who you really, really admire. It could be uh, any kind of a figure. It could be a mother figure. It could be a father figure. It could be just someone that you really, really trust and you really, really believe in them. And imagine this person uh, sitting in front of you and, and talking to you. So this person is saying to you, and I'll just use my name, Annie, your deepest fear is not that you are inadequate. Your deepest fear is that you are powerful beyond measures. It is your light, not your darkness, that most frightens you. You ask yourself, who are you to be brilliant, or who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about you shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. 
We're all meant to shine, and you are meant to shine, just as children do. You were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within you. It is not just in some people around you. It is in everyone around you. And as you let your own light shine, you consciously give other people permission to do the same. And as you are liberated from your own fears, your presence automatically liberates others. This is your sacred work. And when you're ready, thank your person and release them and you come back to the room. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you so much, Reverend Annie. I, I struggle. I don't love focusing on myself, which is, I realize is ironic because I stand up here and sing for you guys every week. But the, the truth is there's a lot that goes on in my head to minimize that. But what really resonates with me is the idea of giving permission to other people to shine their light. You know, like you as an example, giving that tacit approval for other people to step up and let it shine. That really, that really resonates. So thank you so much. I really appreciate that. But somehow I'll see it through And I won't look back I can go the distance And I'll stay on track No, I won't accept defeat It's an uphill slope But I won't lose hope Till I go the distance And my journey is complete but to look beyond the glory is the hardest part for a hero's strength is measured by his heart Like a shooting star, I will go the distance, I will search the world, I will face its harms, I don't care how far, I can 
couldn't go the distance till I find my hero's welcome right where I belong. I will search the world. I will face it haunts till I find my hero's welcome right where I belong. Thank you so much, Tom, and the music team. Boy, are we ever blessed. And what a wonderful message from Reverend Annie. Thank you so much. That was just very inspiring. Thank you. And so Unity has five basic principles that they believe in. So let us affirm, one, God is all good and active in everything, everywhere. Two, I am naturally good because God's divinity is in me and in everyone. Three, I create my experiences by what I choose to think and what I feel and believe. And four, through affirmative prayer and meditation, I connect with God and bring out the good in my life. And five, I do and give my best by living the truth that I know. I make a difference. And Unity also believes in the principle of giving and receiving. And so if you would like to feel bold, which we all do, we are currently having our 70s um, giving program for September and October. So we ask that those of you that would like to feel bold and shine, that you give $70 extra for the month of September and October. And this will help us tremendously. So thank you so much. And also a way that we have forgiving is by uh, you can text your givings to 77977 and type in the word um, offering and we will they will off go off into our um, accounts that way. And uh, we also will pass the baskets. And you can go through uh, mailing, if you like. So we have all kinds of different ways. You can also pay by check. So let us, either way, however, we just appreciate all of your offerings. And so before we pass our basket, let's put our hands together and have our offering prayer. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And I am grateful. So we do ask the um, board members to please pass the baskets now. And if you don't have anything to put in the basket, if you could just put your hand and just bless the basket, that would be awesome. So while we're passing the basket, do we have any first-timers here today, people who are here for the very first time? Raise your hand. We don't do this to embarrass you. We just want to bless you. Mm, we don't have any first-timers here today. Well, there is someone that I would personally like to thank very much and who has done uh, who has been a member of this congregation for a very, very, very long time, 30 some odd years. Jean, if you would just kind of stand up so that we can say thank you so much for everything that you have done for this church. Um, Jean, how many years have you been a congregant? 30 years, yes. 
And so she started, I mean, we've been in several different places, and this isn't the same church I know that you started with, but um, we just appreciate everything that you do. Thank you so much. A nice blessing for you. Thank, thank you again. Okay. That will be great. And Tom. Shall we give Jean a blessing? Yes. Ready? Together? We, we love, love you, you. We, we bless you, you. We, we appreciate, appreciate you, and, and we behold, behold the Christ, Christ in you. you. Thank you again, Jean. Very good. All right. Tom? Um, it is time for us to let our inner light shine. So please stand and sing this little light of mine. Go. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, oh let it shine. And while you're standing, please join hands and let's sing together the peace song and then we will do the prayer for protection. Peace song first. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be. Let God as creator, family all are we. Let us walk with each other. this be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my joyous vow. To take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth and let it be protection. The light of God surrounds us. I am the light of God. The love of God enfolds us. I am the love of God. The power of God protects us. I am the power of God. And the presence of God watches over us. I am the presence of God. And altogether, wherever we are, God is and all is well.